Well, good morning and welcome to my channel. If you want to see how I built this lamp right here, stay tuned and uh, I'm going to show you step by step and all the good parts and all the bad parts. It's extremely interesting. I, I thought at first it was going to be extremely ugly, but I, I've changed my mind. I think it's one of the better pieces I've ever done. So enjoy, enjoy this and uh, join me with this fabulous hobby I have. And I will whirl it up. In what I've got here is a piece of Osage orange, and that's going to be the base for my lamp. Now the problem with this Osage orange is it has got a beautiful void right down the center. And it goes all the way through. So, you know, unless I do something with it, if I start turning it, you know it's going to break apart. Okay, here's the plan. You know how plans are. They're all subject to change. I'm going to cut this in half at the crack. Okay, now I'm going to sort of whittle, you know, cut it out smooth, and I'm going to put another piece of wood in between and glue it together. Well, the center of that was just entirely too rotten, so we adapt is what we do. So I got two pieces of walnut. I drew a line in the center. I'm going to have to hold, have a hole there anyway for uh, you know the lamp. So I'm going to place them like this and like this. And I'm going to glue it all together, and then I'm going to put different things in there, you know. Uh, pine cones and stuff. And I'm gonna come back with you know some 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 way of, of getting more of them in there. I'm not 100 sure. But anyway, let's go. While that's sitting up, which <clears throat> will be tomorrow, I went ahead and went out there and found an old log. I'm going to make a plug to fit in here with about an inch to spare and this is the start of my shade. So I've got the six inch uh, faceplate on and I'm going to put it on the lathe and I'm going to get it to round and then start shaping to that. It's, uh, it's not very good wood but it will be good enough for that because I don't mind wasting it. Then I'm getting ready to whirl this thing down to the Something that resembles something round. And I put on my heavier jacket and heavier gloves and face shield because there's going to be some flying stuff. Which reminds me, last night I was watching a video of a guy, I'm not going to say who it was, he's extremely well known, turning, uh, I don't know what kind of wood it was, but he was doing a natural edge bowl. Had big heavy bark, and he was turning it and crap flying everywhere. He had no face shield and just glasses, uh, short sleeve, and all that kind of stuff. All I gotta say is he's living dangerous because I've turned with just my glasses on before. Do you think that protects you? But stuff flies under them. amazing what you can do with this. This this is literally ready for sanding. Maybe let me double check first. Just to make sure you know, I got plenty of room around. Oh yeah. Perfect old So we're gonna put some sealer on this rascal. And we, then we will 
drill a hole in the bottom of this hydraulic sand bucket and commence to jam it full. I've already uh, got my gumballs and pine cones stuffed into here. I had to reinforce it with tape because when I was forcing it in there, it, uh, cracked, it cracked on me a little bit. This is not real good stuff, you know, it's plastic. Anyway, to get on with it, okay, I'm going to use Easy Cast, casting uh, resin, clear casting epoxy rather, and uh, I just, just got them out of the sink uh, in hot water. They've been there about a half hour or so. And uh, I'm going to mix them up, and what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm probably going to have two batches. I'm going to put blue pearl in the first one, and however far that goes, and then I'm going to follow it up with gold. So we'll hopefully, I don't think they'll blend together too much, but hopefully we'll have like a two-tone deal in there. And of course, we'll, uh, trying something different here, I got a funnel here. I'm going to try pouring in a funnel. But I'm going to also have my vibrating table running as I pour. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I pack these really tight. And the reason I pack them tight is because I'm making a, a lampshade. So I'm going to be fairly thin. And I think I explained it earlier, but if you take resin and you get it too thin, resin alone, regardless of what kind it is, has no strength. In other words, you can take a piece of resin and you can just break it all to hell unless you've got some type of fibers in between. So that's the reason that I'm packing them pretty tight because the gumball fibers and uh, stuff that that will hold it together. Because I'm all in order to for light to shine through it, it's going to have to be turned fairly thin, not real thin, but maybe like a, uh, a quarter, eighth to a quarter inch, something like that. Okay, let's make it roll. I'm also going to thin this because it needs to really be thin. I've done this before and that's okay. And what I found is that uh, the denatured alcohol works real well for thinning. Now you do have to keep it down to somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, all two, three percent, something like that. So here where I can get them close together so I can see. You get an exact whoop. See, bifocals are hell, ain't they? All right, it looks even to me. I always set these on here, side by side, and I look at them, and they're still even, which means I'm relatively close. All right, I'll put a little thinner in here. This is what I did last time. I'm going to put about the same amount. got the base to this lamp all glued together on a face plate and in lace so I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to jump around between uh, this and the shade because you know, things have to sit up till the next day in some cases. I'm not real too sure about this so I put on my heavy jacket and gloves things could go fine, and I'd rather have some protection than no protection. So let's give her a try. Looks like he's only hit one of them so far. We have two of them. It's splintering them off pretty good, but I'll, I'll straighten that out when I get a little more rim. Thank <laughs> you. 
right, I need to rotate my carbide around a little bit. I think it's uh, been abused a lot lately, so I need to reposition it. I'll get you in a minute. Well, here's an extremely unpleasant surprise. My mold must leak during the night. There you go. All of my resin is in the bottom of the pressure pot. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to get this out. And I try to, you know, banging it with a screwdriver and stuff. No luck. It is absolutely not moving. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, put some lacquer thinner in it and leave her sit for a day or so. I don't have much choice, I don't think. The tip of the video in this video is how to not do what I did. So here's my pressure pot. And you notice what I just got done showing you where it leaked. Uh, this is like five days later, and I don't know if you can see it here or not, but that's had uh, lacquer thinner in it for five days, and it's still got some that uh, is stuck to the bottom. It'll come out eventually, but <clears throat> let me tell you what happened and how to avoid it. I used the, uh, one of these little child sand buckets and, and a plug, as you saw in the video. And when I was, uh, you know, putting the gumballs and stuff in it, it did, I got a little crack right there. Well, don't ask me. Just taped it up. What I should have done was just got another bucket. I mean, they're like a whole dollar a piece. So, you know, that was a mistake. I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know why people like me and other people just do things like that. I mean, when I taped it up, I taped it what I thought was real good, but... I had this gnawing in me that says, well, you shouldn't have done that, but I did it anyway. So here's the tip of the video. On your pressure pots, I would strongly advise that you oil the inside of your pot with something. Use a release agent, vegetable oil, or something. And then, lay you a piece of wax paper in the bottom. There's the tip of the video. Let's get on. Hope we don't have any more screw-ups in this thing. Yeah, what I've, what I've just done is I've uh, made me a trough right in here. And I made a uh, deal out of tape to hold resin, and I, I put a uh, little yellow-tinted resin in here to hold those in. And now I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. That is a square piece of walnut, my very last piece. That is going to be the base of the lamp. I got this with cedar on it. This is basically the main part, and it's going to sit that right there, and this is going to have a square bottom. This is going to be the bottom. It's on a waste block with hot glue. So I'm going to sort of hollow this out, and I'm going to bring it down here where it's going to be four legs on each corner.
That line tells me where I start turning down at because this would be, and the base will fit right there. Last week, well, Randy, get out of here. Video in the uh, making of this lamp. I got, I got my new computer came in, so I immediately, you know, got excited and was installing it. I upgraded from the old one I've had about five years. It was just outlived its usefulness. It was, uh, you know, it ran well, but it just wouldn't support some things I wanted. So in, in the middle of all that upgrading, which I went from uh, Windows 7 to Windows 10 and you know, it didn't support the uh, editor I used to use, uh, but the uh, Win Windows uh, Movie Maker Live, it didn't support it any longer, and I couldn't even download it. But I finally found one out of Australia that I downloaded because, you know, that's the one I know. And you know, I just I just really don't want to learn another one. Uh, the other ones are, you know, they're quite different in the way they work. Uh, I downloaded, you know, several of them. Uh, Filmora and some of the others, uh, Da Vinci and some of those, and I took a look at them and, you know, quite frankly, I just don't want to learn another one because I got quite proficient at that one. So, to make a long story short, during the middle of all this crap of, you know, putting files on and stuff like that, I lost part of this thing. I either lost it or I didn't video in the first place, but I know I videoed it. Uh, but the section where, on my shade, where I take it out of the mold and I turn it, uh, inside now, that's all gone. Uh, so we're going to pick up here with uh, sand in the shade and proceed from there. And, you know, I apologize for that. But, you know, things happen. I, I wouldn't call it an accident. There's a reason for it. I just hadn't quite discovered it yet. So let's move on and, and finish this lamp project up. And, uh, you know, perhaps later on I'll pay more attention or do something. Anyway, the computer's working fine now. I got Movie Maker Live working, so I'm a happy camper. So, we're back on the road again. Let's get them. We have sharpened the pecker here, so let's see if, see if it does anything. something. Well, that's doing the trick. Wish I could get a little further up in there. I guess I could. Time to quit. Quit while you're ahead, my friends. You quit while you're ahead. Time to do a little bit of sanding. And put a little sealer on it now. And that'll brighten it up. 
hope. Like I've said before, these uh, gumballs and, and uh, pine cones, you know, they're, they're basically wood, so those cedar don't hurt them none. It's been a while for me and Brandy to go have our popcorn. Here, yellow comes off that. I guess that's maybe the sawdust in it. It's okay. Very good. All right. Time for me and Brandy to go have our popcorn. That's it. In an iron solar. Okay, let's have a quick look first. Let me get this camera off of here. And we'll just have a quick look at it. There you go. See the light through it there, as you can see. I think it's going to be all right. All right. Catch you in a little while. Right, here's your end product. I got it out here in the sun where you can see the colors. It's been quite a journey. Taking me the better part of a week. Highly unusual. Right, here's a better look at it. I. I really like the way this shade turned out. It's about a little less than a quarter inch thick. I didn't get it, want to get it much thicker. Uh, for y'all who, who haven't caught it on, you know, maybe just catching parts of this, this, this wood, this is Osage orange and this is walnut. And in here there's gumballs in, uh, in a yellow tinted resin. This little section right here has got gumballs in walnut uh, sawdust. This is, of course, walnut, and it has Osage orange for a, a bottom band and the top, and the little cap is walnut. And there it is. The whole idea here was to try to produce something that was just totally unique and different, and I think I accomplished that. My daughter says this down here, this is water, and this is clear sky, and that's clouds. So I guess that's what it is. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot. Like and share and tell all your friends, and make sure you come back to see me. And, and I, in the meantime, I'll be keeping it whirling with this fabulous hobby I endeavor in. Goodbye.